Vava Tampa is the founder of Save the Congo and joins me now live from London. Vava, thank you very much indeed for coming on the news hour. Look, just tell us a little bit more about this latest wave of violence, the group that is being held responsible and indeed their links to the Daesh terror group. Absolutely. Um, the ADF has been one of the militia gangs committing crimes and atrocities in Congo for the past five or ten years. And one of the reasons they continue to, con to commit so much crimes and so much terror against the local population is because the Congolese government simply is no longer capable of ensuring security of the Congolese people. And the chief reason uh, for which the Congolese government finds itself unable to look after its people and to protect its borders because of impunity. So until we address issues at the heart of the Congolese state, uh, these kind of militia gangs, including militia gangs such as M23, which is being funded by Paul Kagame, president of Rwanda, would continue to kill freely with impunity. And what is the aim of the ADF? What actually do they want? Are, are, are they attacking villages and innocent people along religious lines? Or is it a mixture of local feuds for, for power and resources? Well, I tell you what, locally, when I speak to communist people on the ground, their views are very different. Um, this perspective of ADF being uh, allied or uh, lined with al and so on and so forth, it's something which we hear often from the West. Uh, locally, UN uh, reports have actually said these militia gangs, some of them at least, have been funded and owned by local political leaders, including military leaders within the Congolese army as well as in the region, so in Uganda and in Rwanda. So locally, uh, Congolese people don't see the difference between ADF or M23 or other militia guys. All we see are people killing us, looting our goods, displacing our people in order to gain access to the land which produces so much minerals, which makes our mobile phone vibrate and, and which are sold across the Western world. And, and in terms of efforts to counteract their threat, it does not seem to be working. I know there's been a year-long campaign involving both the armies of uh, Congo and uh, Uganda, a joint operation. That didn't have any effect. And the US have offered a $5 million bounty for the leader of the ADF. But th this doesn't seem to be bearing fruit. What do you think the solution may be? But the, so the key issue here, um, the, there has been dozens of uh, military actions joined between the Congolese government and the Rwandan or the Ugandan or the Burundian with UN peacekeeping missions, MONUSCO in Congo. None of those have actually helped. None of them have brought the killings of the Congolese people to an end. And the chief reason for this is impunity. The Congolese state simply isn't functioning. The Congolese security system simply isn't functioning. So until the Congolese government actually gets their act together and ends the cult of impunity, which essentially means people who are responsible for a lot of killings not being promoted in the government or in the police force or in the army, but being brought to justice, held accountable for their crimes. Until that issue is resolved, these sort of killings, these sort of displacement which we are witnessing would continue. And, and, and that's the key element. Uh, Vava, thank you very much indeed for bringing us up to date here on the news hour. Vava Tampa there from Save the Congo.